Okay, we're back here live in Las Vegas. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Bill Saltz, who's the Vice President of US Operations and Business Development for Apps Associates. Uh, welcome to The Cube. Thank you, John. Appreciate Glad you coming on. So, you know, obviously, the cloud is big money, and there's a lot of demand for it in the customer base, a lot of confusion, new mindset. Andy Jassy was using words in the keynote like, run these experiments, it's, you know, it's test and dev now moving into production. A lot of customers want cloud, so um, they're trying to figure it out. So you're, you guys partner with Amazon, you help them do that, as well as roll out uh, technology, IT technology. So I got to ask you, what is your big takeaway so far from the show, and what is the top concerns that your customers have around one, what is the cloud, how do they get their arms around it, how do they put it into use? Well, good questions, John. Uh, I think to answer the first part of that, what we're taking away from the show is what we've been driving into as a vision into our clients, which is innovation. The, the cloud is really all about how do you innovate to, for business value. Um, and, and many clients are struggling with how they do that with the cloud, uh, how they do that with other uh, applications and technologies they have. But that vision's important because everything, the paradigm's shifting for them. Uh, and we think a cloud is a big part of that. And when they look at the cloud, they come in, they, do they have preconceived use cases? They start a little small use cases. Do they kind of have a grandiose vision or is it more of, hey, good cost reduction, but I got applications that are driving it. What's, the, what's some of the things you're hearing from them? So, so our client base is primarily enterprise uh, level and they're, and they're definitely taking a, an iterative approach. Uh, and sort of, some of them are taking a wait and see approach. Uh, and, the, and the consulting that we're doing is, is to take that approach from the ground up. Uh, and they'll start with workloads such as dev, test, uh, disaster recovery, backups, which are the transient workloads, workloads where they're not mission critical. One is they want to avoid some of the risk, but they want to understand how it might play for them. So we were talking on the phone the other day about the sort of migration of workloads. You guys work the spectrum, right? From right. the very hard to to, to manage workloads, you know, Oracle, et cetera, uh, and you're actually having, uh, having a lot of success with, with AWS. I wonder if you could lay out that spectrum that, that you see, because you're, you're unbiased here, right? You got, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, it's always interesting, right? You got the AWS guys, Andy Jassy up on this morning, very compelling, any workload, any application, anywhere, anytime, his pie chart of our view of the cloud versus sure. the old legacy vendor's view of the cloud. Then you hear, you know, guys like Joe Tucci, very compelling, smart, a lot of great customers saying, no, our customers want to keep it on premise. So what are you seeing in terms of that, that shift, that mix, and how are you guys helping folks do both on premise and in the cloud? Yeah, and I think it's a, a classic adoption curve that we're going through. Um, and it, and it, because of that, you do have to do some risk management and you don't want to be one of the leaders falling on your sword. Uh, so the portfolio, that we're dealing with is, is an enterprise workload of ERP with BI applications. They're doing some middleware stuff like that. Uh, and what we're seeing is a vision and a shift uh, toward the cloud to, to move them to that future vision where they're, they're actualizing the, the business value of it. And the way that we're, the, they're doing that is to first take that, uh, those transient workloads or those workloads that are less infusive to the uh, organization and do those first. Craplications, I call them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, exactly. so, so uh, to do those first, do you have uh, examples of customers running transaction processing workloads in, in the cloud at this point? Yes, so we've done both. Uh, we've, interestingly, we started with, with, we have a large analytics uh, practice. And that practice, uh, many of the customers said, hey, we want to give procurement to get the hardware in place to do this. Hey, let, let's look at this, this cloud thing. Uh, and what, can this do this for us? Uh, so we, we started with analytics as one of the key areas because that's something that you can take, put into a warehouse, do off, like, off of your mission critical ERP system. So that was one. 
the other is just the, the data backups and the, and the disaster recovery. So those, those are some of the things. Okay, so those are classic cloud classic, workloads, though, right? right? But what about like a, a hardcore transaction processing workload? Do you, have you seen that running in the yeah, cloud? Yeah, I'm sorry, and, yes. And do, you, and do you recommend that that runs in the cloud? Yeah, I think uh, Andy Jassy's right in, the, in terms of the vision. Right in terms of where things are going, right. uh, we don't see that there's um, there's you know a difference between perception and reality there. However, uh, for some of our clients, we've taken one in particular um, about a year ago. The entire infrastructure, from mail systems through ERP systems, all the way to the cloud, everything's off. Uh, into, into AWS cloud at this point. Okay, so everything. Transaction everything, systems, transaction analytics, data systems, warehouse, ERP, mail, everything. And, and roughly the size of that organization, headcount wise? Um, this is a US subsidiary of a, of a Japanese uh, printing organization that's about a $1 billion corporation. Here in the US, that subsidiary is about two, 300 people. So yeah, it's, okay. a, it's a perfect use case for organizations that may be enterprise level that want to do it globally and take it maybe one organization. So, one and, and we have a lot of folks in the Wikibon community that we've talked to, I would say companies even larger than that, you know, four or 500 uh, sure. uh, headcount that have moved everything in the cloud, sure. same thing. Uh, in fact, in the past year and a half, I would say that's picked up quite considerably. We don't have examples of you know, multi-thousand employee organizations moving everything in the cloud. Uh, right. Do you at this point? We don't yeah. have that. We're, we're do, do you expect that to happen? I do time? expect that to happen because the discussions that are going on around that vision, around the business value, are exactly that. How do we get there? And what is what, what can we do for a roadmap point of view to, to manage that risk, okay? Uh, and they may be doing like a, a colo or managed service contract, that's a three year contract. They're not going to do anything till that contract's up, I, these large enterprises. It's things like that are, that are friction to the whole movement uh, in addition to security, in addition to that. They want to understand that and you can't blame them. And that, that's, that's part of it. But absolutely the discussion is, uh, we're seeing the same thing. It's not only picking up, it's accelerating. How do we do it? Are we going to do it? How do we do a hybrid strategy? What makes sense for us? Absolutely. Bill, I got to ask you last question because we got to, uh, we're on the next segment coming up. But put a bumper sticker on this event for the folks out there, you know, on the car. What is this? How would you summarize this year's um, AWS reInvent? Put the, what's the bumper sticker? The bumper sticker is is cloud is innovation. And cloud it's is about, it, it's about innovation. Awesome. Absolutely. Cloud is innovation, new use cases. We heard from folks that are doing things that they never dreamed they could do. Creativity Absolutely. is really the only thing that's stopping the innovation and uh, there's plenty of it here with developers. This is theCUBE exclusive coverage live from the show floor here at reInvent in Las Vegas. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>